But maybe you're the one that's running around now doing the Christmas shopping or thinking about all the stuff that needs to be organised before Christmas Day. Maybe you're fretting about uh, stockings that need filled, decorations that need to be finished, whether Aunt Marge can eat gluten, you know, all that stuff. Well, according to a recent report, women take on the mental load of planning and coordinating activities for children in 78% of families, despite only being the primary carer in 52% of families. No wonder that by the time December rolls around, feelings of exhaustion, resentment and disappointment often replace the traditional Christmas themes of joy, goodwill and merriment. Dr. Rachel Hannam is a clinical director of North Brisbane Psychologists. Uh, Rachel, is what I've described familiar to you? Oh, hi, Kat. Absolutely. Yeah, it is. I think I was saying to you on the phone earlier this morning that when I go back into my clinic after Christmas, I get to hear all sorts of Christmas stories from my clients, including this one, which is from my female clients that they found Christmas exhausting and yet again, they did, you know, all of the organising, made the decisions, did did everything. And so is that what we mean when we talk about mental load? It's a term that we've been hearing for a little while now, but what does it mean exactly? So the mental load is when you have to keep many things in mind. So a lot of checklists, even if you're writing the checklist down, that's still part of the mental load, keeping track of everything and making decisions. And so part of having a high mental load is also something called decision fatigue. And many people might be familiar with this. They get to Friday afternoon and someone says, where should we go for dinner? And they say, you decide. I'm sick of making decisions. (laughs) So it is that cognitive effort that's required to keep track of all the things and make all the decisions. And so just returning to the figures that, uh, that women take on, and this is a federal government report, by the way, women take on the mental load of planning and coordinating activities, 78% of families. How, how did this come to be, Dr. Rachel Hannah? Well, I think that it's just historical. It's an artefact of our history, dare I say, living in a patriarchal society where for so long women were expected to be across everything to do with the domestic situation, kids and family. And then, as we all know, women entered the workforce in large numbers a few decades ago, but continued to do the majority of the domestic and childcare work at home. Now, that is changing slowly, but there does seem to be this phenomenon. Some of my friends comment on it, that they do more of the work and the mental load at Christmas time. And it could be also for some families, um, for some women, they really want everything to be perfect and just right and the house to be clean, everything to be pretty and all the presents for all of the... I'm not one of those women, by mm. the way, but mm. I know that there are a lot of women who want it to be just right. Mm-hmm. And their male partners probably don't care quite so much. So part of it is checking your own... Expe- I mean, t- communication about your needs, and we can go into that, but checking your own standards and expectations as well can help. Yeah, that's interesting. And I do want to come to some of the steps you can take to perhaps lighten the mental load or or help someone take a bit of the uh, the burden off their shoulders. But, Rachel, yeah. if I'm being completely honest, I um, have struggled to ask for help. Like, I will I will just say, no, I'll just do it because it'll be easier if yeah. I do it because I know how to do it. And by the time I explain it and then run the risk of maybe you not doing it properly and then maybe you feel bad because you don't feel like you've met my standards, it's just going to cause a fight and I don't want to go there. So I'll just, I'll just do it. Like, yeah, that's right. And in, in <laughs> psychology, we have two... We have, we have things called schemas, unconscious belief systems, and one schema is called the unrelenting standard schema. That's the one I was just talking about where everything has to be just right. And the other one is the self-sacrificing schema, mm-hmm. which in practice sounds like, oh, I'll do it because, you know, you think I can do a better job and, you know, don't worry about it. Let me take care of that. And women tend to have self-sacrificing schemas. They tend to put everyone else's needs ahead of their own, particularly if they have children. But it certainly seems to be common amongst women. Hmm. So I'm interested to hear from you as well, dear listener. If you've got some ideas about how to make the festive season actually festive, joyful and relaxing and not the mad rush, uh, the, uh, the, the sort of period of high stress anxiety and tension than it can otherwise be. Uh, 1300 222 612 is my telephone number if you've made some changes at home that have worked. 
Let us know. 1300 triple two six twelve. My name's Kat and you're with Dr. Rachel Hanam, who's a clinical director at North Brisbane Psychologists. You'll hear Rachel's advice shortly. But Kath at Kingaroy, uh, by the way, I thank you for the lovely card in the mail recently, Kath. Um, tell me about uh, about your Christmas lunch last year. Kath, what happened? Last year, it was just my mum, my stepdad and I for Christmas lunch. Um, my sister and her husband um, were working that day. So it was just the three of us. For, and mum still raced around, did all the cooking, did all the preparation. She doesn't let anyone else help. So I just had to sit back and watch. And I thought, next year... I'm going to save all my pennies and I'm going to take us all out for lunch. So that's what I've done for this year. Gosh. I've saved my pennies yes. and we're going to a local restaurant for lunch for Christmas Day. You're outsourcing. It's still only the three of us yes. and my niece may also join us, but that's what I'm doing. See, I love that, Kath. That is exactly the kind of practical step that I think uh, could benefit so many families. Good on you. Thank you. Thank you, Kat. Kath, bye. bye now. Kath at Kingaroy, uh, 1300 222612 if you've got a hot tip like Kath does. Uh, Dr Hannam, just to the point that Kath made, uh, it is, it's about learning sometimes to let go. And, and yeah. what about delegation as well? Is that part oh. of the, the situation that we need to address? Oh, absolutely. I would say step one is to write down all of the things that you do. Say you're having Christmas lunch at home and, you know, I mean, that's a great, what your caller just um, described is a great strategy. If you can get out and someone else can do the cooking and the catering and you just pay for the privilege, that's fantastic. But if you are having Christmas at home, then I would say write a list now of all the things that need doing and they might be the things that you've done all by yourself every year and then put names next to the different tasks and break it right down to small tasks. Because Christmas Day, Christmas lunch can be a, considered a project and inside a project are multiple tasks. So write down all those tasks and delegate, delegate, delegate rather than taking the lion's share on yourself. Now, I know in a lot of families, there's what, something called habit patterns, you know, relationships develop dynamics that are habitual over time. So people have got in the habit of not pulling their weight so it might also be important to have a preemptive conversation that um, starts with just your observations of the past. You know, in the last few years, I remember that I've done 70, 80, 90% of the work, and then I end up feeling resentful and exhausted and frustrated, and I don't want to feel that way. So I would really like some extra help and support this year. So my request is that we go through this list of tasks and you decide which ones you'd like to take on board. That would be a sort of democratic and collaborative way of approaching it. Yeah. And, I mean, it's not always uh, women in the households that do this. I know of, of blokes who often yeah. are the ones who are coordinating and organising. Yeah. So it's not necessarily a, a sort of a, a male-female thing, but, but there can often be someone in the house who does the lion's share yeah. of the work. And I guess it's too, it's important, isn't it? Once then the help has been requested learning how to accept the help is also part of the equation. That's a big one for people who are used to being in control um, because, you know, even though we might put our own needs to the back burner, sometimes that's what's going on. Other times we don't want to delegate because we think we can do it better. And that's possibly true, but you'll never change the dynamic and you'll continue to stay resentful and exhausted if you don't let go of control. Mm. So if your teenagers or your partner or whoever else is going to be there on Christmas Day does it differently to you and maybe doesn't do it as well as you, try and have a sense of humour about that. Mm. It's no big deal mm. um, because, I mean, my teenagers like to do things in the kitchen. They don't do it the way I'd like them to do it, but I have to like just take a few deep breaths and let it go because at least they're doing it and it's all okay. No one's going to die. And you've got to do a fair bit of self-talk to let go of that need to be in control. Yeah, okay. Um, so this is some nice ways to get started in the uh, the hard work that is the uh, easing of the mental load of the burdens carried by uh, by one person, sometimes a little heavier than, uh, than other persons in the household. Um, mm -hmm. But I guess th the point is that this isn't something to be taken lightly because what you have described, these feelings of resentment, 
uh, Dr. Hannum, they they can be com- com- particularly corrosive, can't they? And and if if it's something that builds up over time, that can be um, that can be pretty detrimental yeah. to relationships and family structures oh, long term. Very much so, very much so. Whether it's spouse to spouse or parent to child or adult child to their older parent. So one thing I would say is what you shouldn't do because we often talk about do this, do that. What is not going to work is approaching your loved ones, family members with contempt, with judgment, with harsh criticism, uh, with sarcasm. None of that's going to work. That's what people do do. And then they're resentful, even more resentful because their sarcasm and harsh judgments haven't worked. Hmm. So think about what your needs are. You know, express your feelings. I'm feeling frustrated. I'm feeling overwhelmed. I'm feeling resentful. But then tie those feelings to your needs. So you're expressing your need for support, your need for help, your need for mutuality and reciprocity. Mm. Because, yeah, this is, you know, we all want cooperation. We all want consideration. I've never met anyone who doesn't want that. And we're much more likely to influence the people around us if we talk about our needs rather than criticising them and putting Mm. them down. And then just finally, uh, for anyone who, maybe like Kath, observes the person doing the work, uh, offers to help and the help is kind of rebuffed, but you can see that person is stressed out and maybe they just don't know how to accept the help. If you are the, you know, otherwise the support person, how can you make a meaningful difference? Mm -hmm. The first thing that comes to my mind is to ask that person to stop and look you in the eye and make an observation. I'm big on this. I can see that you're feeling frazzled. I can see that you're feeling frustrated. Please let me help. Please slow down just a moment and think about a task that you could give me because I really want to contribute. Don't just do it casually. If you're serious about wanting to take some of the load off the other person, then really get their attention and let them know you have a need to contribute to the workload as well. Because although we want support and care, we also like to give support and care. That's quite intrinsic to human beings. Um, and, and to actually explain, I would like to help. I would enjoy it if I could contribute here. Mm. Please mm. slow down and tell me how I can do that. Um, just really emphasising that I think is important. So helpful. Dr. Hanam, thank you very much for your time and your insight this afternoon.